Oh, just when you thought I was down with the Gemini Lake laptops. Well, this is the TechLast F6 Plus that a lot of you did ask me to review. So this and then the BMAX S15, it's a 15.6 inch laptop, will be it. That'll be the last Gemini Lakes ever, I promise. Laptops, that is. I might look at the new Chewy Mini PC. So this one, you're probably familiar with the specs, okay? That it does have the Ceron N4100, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, 37 watt hour battery and this, okay, 360 degree hinge with a 1080p IPS panel in it. So it's very, very, very similar to the BMAX Y13, which is my current Gemini Lake champion. So does the TechLast F6 Plus have what it takes to best that one? Let's find out here in my review. So it comes in this brown box, which is a little bit different from Tech Glass. We typically have their white boxes. It does offer more protection, but feels a little bit more cheaper. Perhaps they're cutting down on their packaging costs here. So we get in the box the DC charger, which is 24 watts. And there's also this right here, which is a wireless cheap mouse that was included. I think that's part of a promotion from Gearbest. The total travel weight of the F6 Plus here is 1.6 kilos and the laptop itself weighs 1.46 and it's 16 millimeters thick. Overall the weight is good but the BMAX Y13 is lighter at 1.25 kilos. Now for ports this is where the TechLast F6 Plus here is better than the BMAX Y13. We've got a full size USB 3 port, HDMI 2 spec here that's micro HDMI out. We've got Type-C that does support 4K 60Hz. And that leaves us on the right here with the DCN for powering it. So it's 24 watts and it will charge the laptop in just over two and a half hours, that 37 watt hour battery. We have a 3.5 mm headphone jack with mic support, USB 2. This also powers hard drives with no problems, but limited to USB 2 speeds. A micro SD card card reader, again, USB 2 speeds here. So it caps out at about 23 megabytes per second read and writes. And then our power button, which is made out of plastic. It feels okay to me. And this laptop also has four little speakers up the top here. Now, they don't sound that great to me. I mean, they are better than, say, a couple of years ago. We had absolutely terrible speakers in this tech. Still lacks a little bit of volume, but later on in the review, I will give you a sample of those speakers. So the bezels, they're not the slimmest. I mean, they are actually quite a bit bigger than the ones in the BMAX Y13. But here we have a 2 megapixel webcam that's up the top in the top bezel. So the rear of this laptop's made out of an alloy, in fact, the whole build, but the palm rest is plastic. And here we do have a protective plastic over the top of this. Now this metal does scratch in my experience very, very easily, so I tend to leave this on. Now the hinge itself, this is very stiff, and of course having a 360 degree hinge means we can flip around, convert this into a tablet. You've got your presentation mode like so, and then you can also use this by flipping it around into what's called then the tent mode. The underside is all alloy as well with the rear back plate screwed into place and here you can see we do have a 22 by 80 sized SD slot here. That's M.2 SATA 3 ones, okay? So don't buy NVMe, they will not work in here. There's no intake vents on the bottom at all because this is passively cooled like all the other Gemini Lake laptop tech I review. It doesn't need an active cooler. Now the thermals on this particular machine for the Gemini Lake are excellent. It barely goes over 70 degrees and it's very, very good I've found in my experience, especially of course out of the box with the default power limits. And the reason why that is, is unlike most manufacturers, they have put a thermal pad right here over where the chipset is. So we've got a large copper heatsink and then they've put this thermal pad on. So the whole bottom of this laptop is a massive, huge, passive heatsink you could say because that's transferring the heat over to it and that is why the thermals are so good. So the internals do look good, the layout here, everything is screwed into place. We do have a metal hinge, that's why the hinge feels very stiff and should be reliable and we've got a 37 watt hour battery here screwed into place and here are the speakers right here at the top. So I know this question is going to pop up in the comments, so which one is better, the Y13, which is from BMAX, that's on the left of the screen, and then the F6 Plus. After using both of them now for a good period of time, performance-wise they're exactly the same. 8GB DDR4 RAM, they have very similar SSD speeds, battery life is around 7-8 to eight hours on both of these. It really depends on what you want. If you must have the stylus support, the HDMI and the two USB ports, then go for the F6 Plus, I would say there. But if you want a superior keyboard that's also 
backlit. I just find typing on the Y13 is a little bit better because the keys are spaced out wider, better travel from them, better feedback. Then I would say go for the Y13. The Y13 also has a fully laminated screen with slimmer bezels as you can see and it does weigh a little bit less. It's 1.25 kilos versus the 1.46 that the F6 Plus is. So let's take a look at our display here. So it's 13.3 inches, it's 1080p, it's an IPS panel, the maximum brightness scrapes just 250 lux, a little bit below it. And that's really borderline. I feel it's bright enough for most environments. I mean, I've got really bright studio lights on here at the moment, you can see it fine. Because it's not fully laminated, it is a little more reflective, I find, than the BMAX Y13. I'm comparing both of those a lot because they're very similar laptops here. So the touch response and accuracy I find very good. Now if you happen to be tapping away at the screen, the reason I've set it up like this is just to show you what happens. And if you tap here, you will see that it will wobble a little bit the screen. Now this happens with all the tech that's convertible here with these 360 degree hinges. So I do have the color gamut, our color space here. So sRGB of 95% and Adobe RGB of 72%. Overall, to me, this is a decent screen for this kind of category, a low end laptop. And often you find even more expensive laptops that have very poor screens that don't have this kind of color reproduction. So overall, I think it's a good screen. I just would like it to be a little bit brighter and it's a shame that it's not fully laminated. Now the performance of this laptop, it's a low end laptop, okay? Gemini Lake is just a six watt by default. That's the power limit that TechLast have set. We can adjust this in the buy. So you can increase it to say, 10 watts, in fact the cooling will hand that, handle that just fine. You could also actually just completely remove that power limit to get up to 14 watts or so to really boost the performance. I haven't done that here in this video because I believe that most people would just run it straight out of the box how it is. So this is the Geekbench 4 score. You can see this, this is, well not the fastest I have seen but pretty much on par with other chipsets uh, and laptops running the dual channel 8 gigabytes with the Gemini Lake Celeron N4100. This is Geekbench 5, which I can still not really relate to because it changed the scores dramatically. And you can see it's a very low scoring because of course it is a super low end chip. I even did run Firestrike here, which it absolutely struggled with, giving us a extremely low score here of only 313. As expected, I mean, this is not a powerful GPU at all that this has, but for your basic tasks, as you will see, I feel the performance is fine. Now I wanted to comment on the scrolling with touch, this is in Chrome right here. Good, no real problems, and I will do my Chrome performance test because that's probably what most people are gonna be using. We'll have a look at some docs as well. And here we have the speed here of the wireless. Now, I'm not able for where I am here in the studio shooting to get over this result here, around 200 megabits per second, but if you connect up to, say, a FTP server, that's a local one, and you'll be able to get with the wireless around 380, pushing almost 400 megabits per second out of the Intel wireless AC3165. So let's take a look at the multitasking performance here. I have some spreadsheets and docs open, so you can do all of your edits here, and you shouldn't see any slowdown and lag with these kind of light tasks. Here's some docs, and I've got actually quite a few pages here, 83 of them, and scrolling through it right now, you can see that loads in pretty quick, but sometimes there is maybe the occasional little bit of stutter. Windows Start menu pops up really quick. We're not seeing that typical kind of lag. I think that dual channel RAM is definitely helping here. And I will load up here a very demanding file here, 4K. Uh, this is HEVC, 10-bit, but it will actually play natively, okay? Native decoding with these chips. So it will do an initial, initial little stutter here. As you see, it takes a little while. In fact, that's actually pause, there we go. But it's a little stuttery at the start. And once going, that is smooth that playback and very quickly let's have a look at the chrome tab loading performance i'm just going to randomly open some websites here and i'm just going to search something completely random rivers and let's start to open up just a few pages here now wikipedia is very light we'll see how that goes we'll include one video here and um, okay swap over to another tab so so far this performance seems pretty good that should be about enough here. So you can run about 10 tabs, and once they have loaded in, uh, it is then quite quick to swap between them. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. Even with this tech, as you can see, things are loading in there reasonably quick. I just better stop that video in the background. All right, so that isn't actually too bad. And onto our audio performance. So we've got those four little speakers that fire just out the top, and they sound okay to me. There's a little bit of bass. The problem is like all of this tech, the volume, okay? They are lacking volume. 3.5 millimeter output does support microphones 
and I find the quality is good. There's no annoying static. But let's have a listen to those speakers now at 100%. Now one of the positive things about these Gemini Lake laptops and one of the reasons I review them and cover them in the channel is they tend to have reasonably good battery life. This one I found to be a little bit lower. Now you see we do have a tiny bit of battery wear here that's detected by battery bar. Now my runtime here you see I got 6 hours and 44 minutes. Now this was streaming with Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, Docs, editing my website a little bit. So some light to medium use with the screen set to 40% brightness. I expect to get actually a little bit more than this, about seven and a half hours. So I don't know why it is, but it's coming through to be a little bit less than the BMAX Y11, uh, Y13, sorry, which I can get seven to eight hours on. This one, about half an hour less. I'd say seven hours is your best result you can expect from this. So I'm using Counter-Strike here. This is set to 720p and I've got it on the lowest settings. And I do have the multi-core rendering enabled just to help boost the performance here. So you can see it's hovering around 30 frames per second, which is not too bad. The temperatures are very good, only 51 degrees with some of these Gemini Lakes that N4100. I see it as high as 80 or even getting up to throttle some of the earlier models that just didn't have the heatsink with them. So I'm just going to probably die here, but it's just to get an idea of what you can expect frame rate wise. That it is just just scraping what I would call playable, but you can see dipping down here to 13 frames per second is very low. So onto the stylus now, and sorry guys, I'm gonna have to disappoint you here that I'm not too happy with the stylus performance. I don't think it's great. Now take a look at the big problem here we have with palm rejection. The stylus is detected when it is touching the screen, well almost touching the screen, and that is not good for palm rejection. So the lag of it, I'll just quickly show you, isn't bad, but this of course is just one note. If you're using Photoshop or something like that, it would be very choppy. So you can use it right down in the corners of the screen here. That isn't a problem, okay. But where I find it an issue is writing, okay. So I'm going to just write here, hello world. Hello and then world. Okay, that's my messy writing, but the, it's the palm rejection that just does annoy me. See so what happens, that the stylus should be detected now, but it isn't. Now I know with Windows, we can go in there with the settings for the stylus and get it to not actually work with any touch. So just have the stylus when detected, but you're still gonna have that problem of the screen actually detecting it. Now there is some pressure levels here, and I don't have the screen protector on. I highly recommend removing that crappy screen protector because it will then give you a much better touch experience, and even with the stylus as well, because the stylus with the screen protector, because it's plastic, the nib, will end up scratching it, leaving lines everywhere, but here it doesn't scratch the screen. And it feels okay, but it's definitely no Surface Pen with Intrig technology. It's not a Wacom Pen, or it's not like my Samsung Galaxy uh, S6's stylus. Quite poor on the stylus front here, which is a big disappointment. So here is our webcam. This audio you're listening to as well is recorded, and it sounds very, very average to me. There's like a lot of interference or static something coming through on these mics. And the webcam quality, well, it's not 30 frames per second is a little stuttery. So if you want to improve quality, I wouldn't go with this webcam. I would get yourself an external Logitech one, which would have probably 10 times better quality than this. All right, guys, so the F6 Plus from Tech Glass, I think it's a good laptop, but it's typical kind of Tech Glass, really, that there are just some areas that they could have given us, but they didn't. So the screen, if it was fully laminated, would have been great. It would have then put it on par, perhaps, with the... Uh, Y13 screen, the slimmer bezels as well on this one make it look a little bit more modern. It is a lighter model here, the Y13 as well, as I pointed out with that little quick comparison that I did. Now keyboard, it's still a very good keyboard, but I find that the Y13 is a little bit better and I like the fact that it's backlit too. Now really good that we've got a micro HDMI port on this as well that does support 4K 60Hz and then we've got Type-C that also supports 4K 60Hz. BMAX as well does have 4K 60Hz out but you just have that extra option there which is nice. And then the full sized USB ports. Even though there's only one of them, it's USB 3, it is very good to have where this one doesn't have it. It's, it's like a MacBook, you know, you just got Type-C so you're going to need dongles uh, with it. Now battery life did disappoint. I don't really know why. I think I need to cycle the battery a few more times, but I did expect to get at least seven to eight hours where I got a little bit short there with this one. I've also noted there there is some heat buildup that I wanted to mention about here, okay? Now it's not 
enough for me to be worried about it. It gets up to about 32 degrees, so you will feel the palm rest sometimes getting a little bit hot there and warm, but as mentioned, it's not really gonna be an issue, but I just wanted to let you know that. So, okay, when it comes to the stylus, what happened? It's, yeah, well, it's just typical, isn't it? It doesn't have very good palm rejection at all. In fact, the, the stylus really has to touch the screen for it to work, which is a complete no-no when you're doing some handwriting. It just makes it very frustrating because often you'll be writing a sentence and then suddenly it will start to drag and move the whole page and depending on what application you're using because it didn't detect the stylus there when you moved your palm slightly, it didn't reject that. That's the palm rejection. So it's a complete fail there with the stylus really if you ask me. So would you buy this for the stylus if you're an artist or you're note taking and things? Probably not. I mean, I would go with something a lot more different. There's something, you're gonna have to spend a lot more money really to get good stylus performance out of this tech. And the other thing too is, okay, thermals, great. Really, really good thermals. Tech class, well done. I mean, thumbs up, tech class. For putting that thermal pad on there that most manufacturers don't, that I often end up adding with my thermal mods, really did reduce the temperatures. Gave this laptop the best out of the Gemini Lakes with the double data rate, four RAM at least, uh, eight RAM, sorry. Uh, very, very good thermals there. So that's one really good area. I mean, the screen is nice. Uh, it's 250 nits. I mean, it could be brighter and it's non-laminated. So non-laminated screen versus the fully laminated and slimmer bezels again is another area where I give the BMX Y13 the win there and still my current eight gigabyte Type-C, full spec Type-C champ from the Gemini Lake laptops that is. Selling for around this one, around 300, I think it's about 330 US at the moment. This is also about 310 or 330, uh, depending on what websites you look at. So for the price, I think it's okay, but the price does really need to come down. It's a little expensive. So there we go. Want the full size ports, want the starter support, get this one. For everything else, I would get the BMAX Y13. Thank you so much for watching this long video from me here, but I hope it did answer all your questions. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.